Hey guys, Sam here from Technology Edit, and today I'm going to be explaining some common network terms which may be useful for you when dealing with networks or home uh, computer systems. So the first one is LAN, Local Area Network this stands for. It simply just describes a network between computers, say around your house. Um, or it could be uh, between your PlayStation and your computer or anything basically on your Wi-Fi network or plugged into your router um, connecting devices together. There's also a wide area network which, uh, or WAN, which is describing more than one network joined together. Um, this generally refers to the internet but can also refer to other things, say multiple different campuses of a university would, um, connecting together would be described as a wide area network. Uh, the WWW, the World Wide Web, simply describes the um, way of accessing information across the internet. So it's not just the connection of devices together but it's actually that um, accessing of information and you type in the www for url so you can see where that comes into play there uh, it refers to basically accessing displaying and linking web pages together There's also http which is a protocol um, describing how to view information on a web page uh, also known as the hypertext transfer protocol um, this is in contrast to other different types of protocols you might have heard of including like ftp which is file transfer protocol basically just sending files between two different locations um, and there's a whole variety of other different things, but there's the main ones uh, that everyone uses is HTTP and there's also HTTPS, which is the secured version um, of the encrypted version of that one. Um, so I'll go through some devices. This is a, a network hub. So it's a very simple device. Basically what happens is the data comes into one of the ports um, and then it's sent to all the other ports equally. So let's say you've got your PlayStation, Xbox, computer and Mac all connected to the one um, switch. When your computer requests information from, say, the Xbox, the Xbox will send it back and the hub will send it not only to the Mac that requested it, but also to the computer and the PlayStation. Um, so it's kind of an unintelligent device, but they can be found pretty cheap. Downside of this is it takes up a lot of network bandwidth sending the same um, inf data to each of the different devices as opposed to just sending it to the one. Um, but requested it. So going on to this, there's a switch which is like a hub except it's intelligent and only sends the data to the um, device which actually requested the data. So you know if a computer hops onto facebook.com, Facebook will just send it back um, the information and just go through the switch back to the computer and not all the other devices. So it frees up space for them to do other things. Router basically designed to connect multiple smaller network e.g. switches together. Um, this term's kind of interchangeable with I guess switch um, and also with your Wi-Fi, you have a Wi-Fi router. The modem, which is basically designed to, um, or it, it definitely does, um, gets information from the internet from your telecommunications provider and converts it into something which your computers or other devices along the network can actually understand versus whatever comes in on the phone line or the coax cable comes into your house. So IP addresses or internet protocol uh, addresses are a unique address assigned to either your device or your network. So there's two types of IP addresses basically. You have internal IP addresses which is within the network. Each device will have its own thing. It'll basically be 192.168.0.something. So like for example the router here is 192.168.0.1. That's how I get onto it from just typing it into a web browser. And then each device has their own number. And then you have your external IP address which is basically how devices outside your network know where you are. So some places might have a static IP address, for example at this house, if I turn off the Wi-Fi router or it's a new day or anything, that IP address doesn't change, it's always the same thing. Um, but other places might have a dynamic IP address and so this is um, when the telecommunications provider kind of changes it so they, so they only have a limited amount of IP addresses and that many customers so they only, they assign the IP addresses based on who's using it so they don't have to use the whole um, so they, so they actually have enough IP addresses for everyone. Um, and then this crosses into IPv4 versus IPv6, which is version 4, version 6 of the internet protocol. Um, so you might have heard about the switch. And so IPv4, um, there are 4.2 billion possible IPv4 addresses. So they're your traditional IP address. Um, and with the numbers and the combinations of numbers, there's only a possible 4.2 billion IP addresses, which sounds like heaps. But if you think about in this room, for example, I've got my laptop, camera with Wi-Fi, computer here, phone in my pocket. That's like a couple of, that's one, two, three, four different IP addresses right there. Um, and so imagine if you have every person in the world with four 
um, kind of we run out pretty quickly. Um, there's not even enough IP addresses for every person in the world to have their own one. So we move over to IPv6, which is a much more longer and complicated number, um, but that supports 340 undecillion IPv6 addresses. So it's basically a whole lot, ton more. And then telecommunications providers are slowly moving over to this standard. Cat cables, category cables, they're basically just the different ratings of uh, network cables you can have. Um, one point, I guess once upon a time there was a Cat1 cable, but today we kind of use Cat5 or Cat6 cables, or sometimes Cat4 cables, and they're just basically different ratings of how much, how far they can travel and how much data they can travel um, rated to the distance. Uh, and I'll link to another video on Cat cables right here. We also have Ethernet. So Ethernet is the protocol for describing how data travels from one place to another over a cable. Um, so it's basically yeah, the protocol to connect two or more devices physically together and, in, and basically has a whole lot of different checks and things in it to ensure that data sent at one end is actually received at the other end um, properly. MAC addresses, media access control addresses, and these are a unique device set by the manufacturer when the device was actually built um, to uniquely identify the device. So your Wi-Fi router, for example, will have its own MAC address that, say, Belkin or Cisco or whatever is set when they originally manufactured the device. Your computer, your network interface in your computer will have its own MAC address, um, and each device you have will have its own MAC address, and that's how the router basically knows the difference between uh, each device on your local network. Uh, we have registered jack, RJ, it's also known as. Uh, you might have heard, you've, uh, heard of RJ11 or RJ45. These are describing the physical connectors on the end of a network cable or a phone cable. Um, some are smaller, some are bigger. Um, it basically describes the, yeah, the physical connector. So you have RJ11, that's used for telephones, they're kind of smaller. And then you have RJ45 um, for network interfaces, and that's um, just the slightly larger one. But you will find your phone line can plug into the, um, like, to a uh, RJ45 plug. So they are kind of reverse compatible. And then another way of describing um, the different plugs is through the number P slash number C method. So for example, like a network network cable is 8P, 8C. This basically means it has eight positions and eight conductors. So that's the P and the C, positions, conductors. Um, then there's like kind of other variants of this. So for a phone cable, there's less. It's like 6P, so six positions, and there's only two conductors. Um, and then for, the, for a different, um, like applications of that, people can use different um, amounts of positions and conductors for their cables. And the final concept I'm going to be talking about is 802.11 um, asterisk. So it's basically just a whole lot of different um, ways of uh, Wi-Fi communicating, a whole lot of different standards. Um, and we've got a video linking to that here. So thanks for watching this video on network uh, terms explained. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I did this video as kind of a prequel to the episode I'm going to be making on how to wire your house with Ethernet. So if you're looking forward to that, give us a subscribe and even post a comment. Thanks for watching.